several times over, uh, George Lucas did refer to uh, future Star Wars chapters uh, after uh, the Return of the Jedi. Uh, even before, you know, he, he fulfilled all that. He just didn't know where things would be and where it would go. He certainly didn't know when he would get to the prequels uh, because, you know, the numbering of the movies, uh, you know, indicates that. So sooner or later, uh, to complete this, you would have to do them. Uh, and he kept saying, well, the technology wasn't there yet, so that's why it took so long before he finally got to it. And all that sort of thing. It could have happened sooner, and maybe it would have been better that it did. Uh, and before they decided that uh, you know the story of the twins was the the base of it all, uh, that there was gonna there was talk of a, a trilogy of Luke searching for his sister and all this sort of thing. Uh, but it ended up the way it did, and for a long time uh, there was no Star Wars. There was the novels and comic books, and the novels, of course, uh, and the comic book adaptions of them. Uh, explored the latter adventures of Luke Skywalker and his friends, and so on and so forth. But uh, decades passed, and uh, we got the prequels. Uh, the, they weren't perfect. <laughs> They've got quite a few flaws, but they didn't destroy the franchise or anything like that. And in some instances, maybe there's a little too much hatred for them and didn't quite deserve it. Uh, but other than that, you know, everything was still intact. You still had this beloved uh, franchise and uh, possibilities for, for more things. And so, of course, George Lucas sold to Disney. And uh, it, it's no good if they can't do more movies, you know. <laughs> you know? So, so, of course, they immediately announced, yes, there will be new movies. Because uh, after being his feelings hurt so bad by the reaction to the prequels, George, that there is no Chapter 7. When before, he had said there was. Uh, he'd even asked uh, young Mark Hamill, would you be interested in returning to the role when you're much older to play an Obi-Wan type character and all this type of stuff. And Mark said, oh, I don't know. I don't know where I'll be by then, you know, and all this type of stuff. And so here we are. We get to it. And, well, it's not really in George's hands anymore. And at the time, after the prequels, people were thinking, that's probably for the best and all that. Well... Well, apparently he did write up an outline or treatments, as he called them, for where the movies, these three new movies could go. And uh, Disney said, thanks, but no thanks. And uh, uh, yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> I mean, it's just the outline. It's just the direction of where it's going. Uh, you can work on that on your own, but at least have something. And uh, they threw it out. So I don't know where he was going, but I, I know for sure it would not have been just a retread. Uh, Force Awakens is the movie we got. And there is certainly throughout literature uh, the mirrors and echoes and this sort of thing. And, of course, the original trilogy, the six films, that's clearly there. And it's the echo and mirror between the father and son story that is played out there. Uh, you know, with Tatooine and all that, where, where they come from, and there's very similar things, and where the father went this way, the son went that way, and that's how that plays out. Here, it's just a flat-out copy. It has no purpose. Uh, you know, why is Rey living the life of Luke Skywalker in this movie? You know, uh, is she Luke's daughter? Well, oh, that's too obvious or something, but you, you, you should have had that in stone. We now know... It was either abandoned or not. Whatever the story was for Ray, uh, they didn't give her one. Uh, but she's there. She says, well, we need a girl to be the lead uh, hero here and all that. Okay, fine. You got her. Now, what's the story? Oh, well, you're a misogynist for asking, I guess. I, I don't know. Uh, she never gets a story. Uh, who mourns for Ray? <laughs> Nobody, you know. Uh, she never gets a story. So... Uh, it's, so whatever outline they had, you, know, you look at the, uh, the, the the Force Awakens art book, which shows a lot of concept art and concepts there. They might have been a lot better. Uh, where you know she, had, she she's, she's a scavenger in the movie. That's how she's making a living on that on Jakku, and that could have been the beginnings of a whole plot where she finds something and it leads her into this world, and uh, she eventually comes to meet. She's almost like. Uh, a vehicle for the audience to view the world as it is now. You know, well, where are they now? And she she comes upon the uh, legendary heroes uh, of Star Wars, 
and that leads her to it. I don't know that I would have made it, you know, Luke's lightsaber, but something along those lines, and that would have been a cool thing. But it's not. You know, I mean, it, it, a, a lot lately, has been, it seems that J.J. Abrams uh, films a bunch of cool-looking scenes, uh, like the, the scene where you saw Ray's uh, speeder streaking across the landscape, and there's the dilapidated ruins of the old uh, Star Destroyer. That's a beautiful scene. It speaks volumes, except it doesn't. You know, you, you think it does, <laughs> you know, but it, it doesn't. And uh, it's sad because that's the kind of thing that hooks you in. It certainly hooked me in, uh, but it, that's not what it's about. It's not there. There, there is nothing, you know, it, it's just, let's copy this. Let's copy that. You know, Han Solo is Obi-Wan, you know, Ray's Luke and, you know, also on and on. Uh, BB-8 is R2. And, and of course, lately there's rumors that George still has certain rights to the old characters so they had to make up new ones or something like that i don't know maybe so but that gives it more of an explanation than just the laziness uh, of this presentation a big big mistake of uh, force awakens was just bringing back the empire that's all for first order is you know the stormtroopers are there the star destroyers are there the laziness in ship design the only good design ships are the old ones everything else in force awakens all the different ships are just silver bricks you know it's just nothing uh, this ginormous star killer death star that they, i mean it's a whole planet they hollowed i mean the republic just sits on its ass while this is being developed I, you know it's just oh, only Leia and her resistance was allowed to do this with old decrepit uh, you know armaments and stuff. I, no <laughs> it shouldn't have been a first order the idea of the Knights of Ren could have worked better there's this group they're mysterious they're, they're, they're committing terrorist acts they're terrorizing the, the area and uh, people like Leia and Han are, are looking for it. Han and Leia should not have been a divorced couple that's just so formulaic and tired. And Han being a smuggler again. That, that is the devastation for Han's character. It's not as bad, I would, I would uh, submit, as what happens to Luke Skywalker. But uh, a lot of people are upset with his death. The death uh, is actually one of the high points. Stay, stay with me. <laughs> Uh, you have Han Solo making a heroic gesture to save his son. So what's he going to do? He's going to have a shootout with him? No, it's his son. He loves his son. He wants to save his son. And he goes there completely vulnerable. It's the only way to do it. And it doesn't work. But that's the heroic effort that Han is making. It's the, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's sad that he's stuck in the, the trappings of his earlier persona because JJ's too lazy to think of one, you know, but, you know, but to, to have this moment here where he's trying to save his son, it doesn't work. Uh, you know, Kylo kills him and he falls to his death. Now that's a heroic death in the sense of what it, it the context of what it is. He's not fighting Darth Vader. He's not fighting Bubba Fett or whatever. This is his son you know and so I, I a lot of people don't like it they didn't want him dead and all this sort of stuff i didn't shock me at all i knew harrison ford has been wanting to kill that character since the old movie <laughs> and that was probably the deal to even get him to come back says yeah i'll come back but this time you got to kill him off so okay okay and that you know something like that i don't know but uh but it's also problematic in the sense like you know what the audience wants and this is where people, hey, you just went fan service. And I was like, yeah, well, that's what it is. <laughs> and that Leia and Luke are not present for the death of uh, this uh, you know, a character. And uh, the new people are there to see it. Well, you could have them there too, you know, to witness this terrible thing. But it, it just doesn't really have the impact without them there, at least, you know, without with Leia. And then making it worse, J.J. Abrams even admits this. Uh, when they come back from having de destroyed Starkiller Base and all that, and uh, Leia's there to receive them, she hugs Ray, a girl she doesn't know from Adam. <laughs> you know? It should have been Chewie. You know, it just should have been Chewie. And that's it. You could still have Ray, and she's still witnessing this. It's all sad. She breaks down in tears and everything. Uh, you know, she'd still sort of be a part of it, but she's like a witness to it, that she would have worked much better as a witness in this movie. As you get to the other two, then she becomes more of the character that you're invested in. Um, but, and then, uh, you know, they find the map, and, oh, Luke Skywalker, we, we found where he is. 
And that was the, the opening crawler seems to suggest that that's the main mission for Leia is to try to find him. She can't find him. And they finally figure out where he is. So they send this girl that nobody knows <laughs> with Chewie. At least Chewie's going uh, to go to go find him. Leia doesn't go. You know, I what the hell? It should have been written in a way that, you know, that the, the map was confusing. They weren't quite sure. And uh, Leia and her crew are going this way, and Ray is, is convinced it's another way, and uh, because you know the Force and everything, and uh, she and Chewie go off, and turns out she's right. She finds Luke, and they don't. You know, something like that, rather than just go find Luke, Ray. <sighs> no. <laughs> so, and then of course, once again with Abrams, why does he leave it like that? He figured this is a great cliffhanger where Luke just appears at the end. And, oh, man, what's coming next, huh? Yeah. Whoa. But it's just this powerful scene that's just all icing and no cake, you know, because there was nothing there, um, and we know that now because of what comes next. So Force Awakens uh, didn't really damage the franchise like its uh, successor did, um, but it's not that great of a movie. It's a lazy movie. And and more so, everyone noticed this about I tore down Han Solo by making him a deadbeat dad and all this sort of thing. Uh, it's very disrespectful to its own original characters, especially Rey, who's supposed to be the hero here. She gets nothing. And it's not even like there's clues and whatnot. There really is. And don't tell me there are. There aren't. And uh, she's a blank slate, and they gave her nothing. And she's just there to just sort of be a, a, you know, a copy of the Luke Skywalker story. And it's not even really that good at that. So, um, yeah, very disrespectful to that character. <laughs> but if you thought that was disrespectful, oh, boy, wait. <laughs> so Kylo and all that's interesting, but you don't really, you know, what what's the story? What happened? Who the hell is Snoke? And people, the most obvious suggestion would have been that he was uh, he was Darth Plagueis, that he survived, and that, you know, when they become a Darth, that's a new name, so maybe his real name had always been Snoke. And my favorite idea would have been that Snoke was ba basically an imaginary friend for young Ben Solo, and when he's so powerful with the Force, he projected and brought this thing to life. <laughs> And this is why Luke has to run away to the old temple to try to figure out what happened. He's searching for knowledge of the old Jedi. Has this ever happened before? Something like that. No. 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 <laughs> There's nothing there. All icing. No cake. And so, there you go. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was The Force Awakens. Well, I can't say that much... Uh, was awake. Well, I guess it was woke, huh? <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. It was really, really sad. Uh, the Finn character was actually the more entertaining of the new ones. And uh, so, well, I guess he's going somewhere. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> so. So there you go, The Force Awakens. You know, I just was not in a mood to really do a review or anything. I'm just looking back and uh, did, was it over because of the force awakens no there's problems there the big mistake i think was of course not giving ray a, a story uh, enough of a story uh if there was more in the outline and, and johnson is the reason it got thrown out well then there you go but uh but also the first order just does not work and uh you know it just it's just ridiculous and uh it undercuts what the previous movies achieved so it, it just, they had no ideas, none. And uh, that's too bad. That's too bad. All right. Thank you for watching and listening. Say, why not like and subscribe and check out that link description below. That'll take you to my many stores that have plenty of goodies for you.